Hey everyone, happy Monday. Welcome to another Ask Amy. I have a question today from Samantha. And Samantha says, Dear Amy, I've had so many random problems over the years, but I randomly got one out of the blue that feels like it's torturing me and I don't know what to do. I randomly had knee pain the other day. I'm kind of laughing, Samantha, because um, my husband, from the time we met 15 plus years ago, he always made fun of me for saying random all the time. So, and you're, you're my, you're my sister here. You say random a lot too. I randomly had knee pain the other day. And ever since then, I've started having really disturbing thoughts about my knees throughout the day. And especially at night when I'm not occupied, I have these really gross thoughts about my knee cracking forwards and I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but it's horrific visual thoughts that I can almost feel about my knees that make me so squeamish and disturbed. They keep coming around and I can't cope with them. My, my knee pain has physically gone away now, but I'm mentally so bothered by these thoughts and they don't seem to be going away. I don't know what to do. It's literally affecting my sleep at this point. It's such a ridiculous, random, specific anxiety that literally came from out of nowhere and I miss the days when I didn't have it. I know this sounds strange, but these thoughts are making me so miserable and I'm overwhelmed by them and it feels beyond my control and I don't know how to stop being disturbed by them because they genuinely are scary thoughts. Um, thank you so much. I'm sorry if this seems like a joke. It doesn't. Unfortunately, I'm being serious. No, I get it. I get it, Samantha, and I get that. Um, this must sound crazy. This might sound like a joke. It's really out there and yet I'm gripped by it. I think we've all had our own, our own version of that experience for sure. Um, you know, the thing that comes to mind, Samantha, first off, I just am coming from a call in the Little School of Big Change where we had Jack Pransky as our guest. And I might be stealing this a little bit or I might just be influenced by the conversation we just had. But he just asked a woman on, on our, in our group a question that went something like, she was saying, I see life this way and it's scary and horrible. He, there was more to it than that, but that was the gist of it, right? She's saying, I see life this way, it's scary and horrible. And my friend over here who has way harder life, way tougher circumstances, way harder life, sees life that way. And it's not scary and horrible for her. Yet, objectively, there's a big difference here. Like anyone on the street would pick my life over hers, circumstantially. But feeling-wise, experience-wise, hers is incredible. She's grateful for everything. She's having a great experience. I'm in misery over here, and there's nothing really bad happening. And he asked her something. He, he said something along the lines of, um, you know, if I were you, I'd be really curious about what she what she sees that you don't like how she's seeing things that you don't and then this student in the school went through she could she could really kind of spout off how her friend saw things yeah my friend sees this and she says this is happening and she sees how it's all connected and how we're okay and this whole whole thing where listening to it it's so obvious to see how yeah someone who thinks that way is going to have an incredible experience no matter what's happening now, is it nicer when their life's going well? Sure. But really, no matter what's happening with the thoughts that her friend had, fine. You're fine. And with the thoughts that she has, again, no matter what's happening, with the thoughts that she has, not so fine. And what Jack was really kind of pointing her toward is like, that's, that's a place to be curious. Like, isn't that interesting how she can have such a different experience than you. And that, just right in this moment, Samantha, reading your question, is kind of what comes up for me. It's like you call it random a lot. You know it's random. You know it's thought. Your knee doesn't even hurt anymore. What's happening is that your mind is creating a story and some pictures. And you say it's, go back to your thing, you say it's terrifying, it's genuine, these are genuinely scary thoughts. You're, it feels beyond your control, it's so disturbing, it's strange, it's making you miserable. And I get that, that is your experience of it, but how could that not be? And I don't want you to, don't focus on the how, like okay, let's think about it in a different way, but could it not be? Let's just say it that way, could it not be? Of course it could. 
You could be having this really strange, random, you know, out of nowhere thoughts about your knee and images about your knee. And that could be neutral. It could be funny. It could be something you you laugh about, like, oh my gosh, my brain's worried about my knee again. My knees don't even hurt, but there goes my mind. Tell me all these stories about my knee again. It could be that. No, I'm not saying you, Samantha, should create it that way or that you're wrong because it's not that way. I just want you to see what's possible. Of course that's possible. Of course it is, right? It could be anything. It could be terrifying like it is for you. It could be more terrifying than it is for you. Or it could be neutral, or it could be funny, or it could be like, wow, isn't our mind amazing? How it just makes stuff up, totally random, makes stuff up. You have a sore knee, before you know it, you have this whole story going, isn't that amazing? Isn't it cool to be alive? Now, I know it sounds like there's a bit of judgment in this, and it is true that at the, at the end of the scale where you are, there's a lot of suffering. And at the other end of the scale that I'm talking about, there's not a lot of suffering. So. As humans, we're going to hear that as, oh, this is better. I want to get myself over here. But if you can take that piece out of it for a minute, I just want you to really sit and marvel in the fact that the exact experience you are having could be anything. It could be anything. And I bet for you, even though when your mind goes there, there's a bit of memory and red alert and I don't like this and it's back and why and all that stuff that comes up that makes it not so great of an experience. I bet that if you look, even for you, it's a lot of things along that scale, meaning it's not always this horrible, hard, scary experience. I bet your knee and whatever pops into your mind at times and you kind of just get distracted and it goes away or you, you know, you just have a different, a different relationship with it. It just doesn't look so big. So it might not sound like enough, but it is, it is exactly what you need. Not how do I change it? How do I get out of it? But just seeing, wow, isn't it incredible? This is how every single experience that every single human being on earth works. It's, it's, it's just what we're all going through is our mind grabs onto some thinking and, and it's brought to life in this incredible, real, funny, serious, whatever. It's, it's brought to life with incredible realness. <laughs> and that is our experience. But you can't lose sight of the fact that it is thought. It is a story your mind just goes back to. And it could be anything. Like you say, it's random. And there's a lot for you to see in that word random that you like to use, like I like to use too. Random is like, oh, there's nothing to this. It's not about me. It's not about my knee. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with my mind doing this. There isn't, Samantha, honestly. There's nothing wrong with the fact that your mind does. That's what minds do. It's what minds do. Where we get a little bit of leverage and, I don't know, a different experience from it is to just see, oh, this is what minds do. Every single one of them, all the time, all day, every day, all the time. It's just how minds work. It's what minds do. And this is this happens to be the story minds telling, but that doesn't mean anything. We don't need to hang on the story. Trust me, all 7.7 .7 billion of us are having all kinds of wacky stories play out in our head. All kinds of random stories play out in our head all the time. Some of them we get a little rattled by, we take kind of seriously. Others we don't. There's no real rhyme or reason to it, but they aren't any different. So the fact that this knee thing has been in your mind for a while and it's keeping you up and all that, yeah, it's disturbing. It's, it's disturbing your life. But I want you to see that it's no different than any other thought. It's no different than having a song stuck in your head for a few days or, or anything else that we just kind of get, our mind gets a little stuck on. It's not inherently any different. But part of what our mind does is tell stories about our experience. So you're not only having a knee thought, which is kind of inherently neutral, you're afraid of it now and you feel haunted by it. And your mind is saying, what's wrong with you that this is here and it's a new issue and you need to solve it. But what if that's all thought too? No, you don't. No, you don't. The whole thing is thought. The initial thought is thought. The thought after it's thought. The whole thing is thought and you are okay. You are 100% healthy and fine and resilient and the less you worry about this thing the more you're able to kind of see oh i could experience it any way 
in theory at least, it could show up any way because it has no real power. It's just thought. It's, it's not inherently scary or anything. Then the more I bet you find yourself kind of moving at different places along that spectrum rather than just feeling stuck in, in feeling haunted and taunted by, by these random thoughts. So I hope that's helpful to you, Samantha. I hope it's helpful for all of you listening. Um, if you want to see more about how thought works, this whole illusion, and how we pop out of it sometimes in just incredible, huge ways, um, in this post I have the link to a couple live events that I have coming up, one um, here in the U.S. and Michigan and one in London in the next month, uh, and also the link to join the waitlist for the Little School of Big Change, which sounds like it's far away, but the next course starts in September, and that's going to be here before we know it. So. If you get on that wait list, you'll just be informed as things start moving and there's all kinds of cool bonuses uh, that you get to see if you're on there. So um, thanks so much, guys, for sending your questions. Thank you, Samantha. Send your questions to AskAmy at thelittleschoolbigchange.com, and I'll see you back here next week. Bye, everyone.